Hello. In this video, we'll continue our discussion of corporate distributions and look at problem number two. If you have yet to watch problem one, please stop the video and watch problem one first because this problem series is meant to be a progressive structure in order where the concepts are learned through problems one to the end of the problems. It's also important to note that while the fact pattern might look very similar to the previous problem, it might be, but just note that every problem does have some type of variant in the fact pattern, some type of change. So please be careful. Kiwi owns all the stock of Fruit Sushi Inc., which is a C corporation that creates delicious fruit sushi. Kiwi's basis in her stock in the corporation is $24,000. In the first year of existence, Fruit Sushi Inc. lost $20,000, which was measured by earnings and profits, also known as EMP. In its second year of existence, Fruit Sushi Inc. earned $24,000 of EMP and distributed $15,000 of cash to Kiwi. Now note that all EMP was earned or lost equally throughout the year from ordinary business. So in years one and two, the EMP was earned and lost equally um, from ordinary business. We need to determine the tax consequences of both Kiwi and Fruit Sushi regarding the distribution. So whenever we have a distribution, a corporate distribution, we always start by first determining whether it's going to be a property distribution, which includes cash, or a stock distribution. Because if it's a stock distribution, we have different rules to apply. If it's a property distribution, which Section 317 um, deals with the property distributions, and it really um, states that property is very broadly defined in the sense that it includes cash, property as we might uh, think, and also stock and securities, but does not include stock in the actual um, corporation, which here is Fruit Sushi. So here we're dealing with a property distribution under Section 317 because we have a cash distribution. So therefore, we're going to apply the normal distribution rules because this is a cash distribution. Now, whenever we have a cash or property distribution, we apply four steps, and you must go through those four steps in order. The first two steps are we determine, or step one, we determine the tax consequences to the corporation on the distribution with respect to the distribution. So if there's any gain or loss, the corporation might have to recognize that respective gain or loss. The second step after you determine the tax consequences of the corporation, which here is Fruit Sushi Inc., is to determine the current EMP with respect to the corporation, but you have to adjust for step one. So if there's any gain, for example, with respect to step one, you have to add that to current year EMP, which current year EMP is $24,000. So if there's gain, we'd have to add that to that. Now, you might recall from the previous problem video, whenever we have a cash distribution, steps one and two, have no tax consequences. There's no consequences. So going forward, if you're dealing with a cash distribution, you can go ahead and you can skip to step three and step four because you'll have no consequences with respect to step, with respect to step one. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to do that. We're going to go and we're going to jump right to step three and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to erase with respect to step one and step two. So now that we've determined that steps one and two have no consequences, Again, and this is what we're going to be doing going forward with respect to a cash distribution, which is what we have here. If it's a property distribution, you must go through steps one and two. We can go ahead and we can go to step three and step four. So step three, we determine the tax consequences to the shareholder or shareholders. Here, there's only one shareholder, which is Kiwi. And really, we're looking at the um, how, how exactly is the distribution going to be taxed to Kiwi. And then finally, step four, we adjust accumulated earnings and profits for the distributed corporation, so Fruit Sushi Inc., so that way next year we have that information going forward. All right, so remember the, the meat of the discussion really comes from step three, which step three has some sub-steps. There's three sub-steps that we have to go through. There's three of them. The first is to determine the amount. 
determine the amount of the distribution. Because you're going to see that when we get to step three, remember it's a waterfall and it must add up to, the waterfall must add up because it has to capture that amount. So we determine the amount of the distribution. And the amount of the distribution is going to be cash plus the fair market value of property minus any liabilities assumed by the shareholder. So here it's just cash, $15,000 of cash distributed. So that is the amount of the distribution. It's $15,000. Okay. Step two, we determine EMP. And I call this determine EMP overall. Because remember, if you have accumulated EMP, it's positive, and current EMP, it's negative, or vice versa, we have to determine the effect of that. Because as some of you remember, when we get to step three in the tax consequences, EMP will make a difference with respect to how the, how the distribution is treated. So here we have current EMP and accumulated EMP. And I apologize, I always start with accumulated EMP because that's more that's earlier in time. So accumulated EMP in here is the accumulated EMP at the beginning of the year, which we're told we're in year two when this distribution is occurring. So it'll be the beginning of year two, which is the end of year one. So in the first year, Fruit Sushi Inc. lost $20,000 all equally over the period of time. So that means at the beginning of year two, the accumulated EMP is negative 20,000. Negative 20,000. In its second year of existence, Fruit Sushi Inc. earned $24,000 of EMP. So the current EMP for year um, two, which is what it's at issue, is a $24,000. But remember, we adjust for step two, which there's no consequences. So it's $24,000 plus zero from step one and step two. So that means current year MP is $24,000. Okay, so we have a negative accumulated EMP and a positive current EMP. So some of you are probably saying, oh, I know what we should do. If we're getting the total, the overall EMP, shouldn't we net these numbers? Shouldn't we net these numbers? And you, generally speaking, you, what you would think is correct. However, we know that tax law has very specific situations. And that's exactly what you're going to see applies here. The tax law is very specific on what to do. The regulations in Section 316, specifically Reg 1.316-1, states that if we have current EMP that's positive and accumulated EMP that's negative, we ignore the accumulated EMP with respect to determining step three. So the idea is that we focus on current EMP and the idea behind this is because it's a better indicator. If you recall from my video on why we use EMP, the EMP for the current year makes more economic sense because that's what's happening in the current year. Yes, okay, overall the position, that's what's happening. But the idea is you're looking at, okay, if there's a distribution, the idea is where is it coming from? Is it coming from capital or is it coming from earnings, which we know earnings are taxed like ordinary income. Capital, though, is taxed as a recovery capital concept because you've invested money already in. So the idea here is, okay, well, if the current year has positive EMP where you actually have earned something, but it's negative in, in prior years, we hear the first year, we think that current year makes more sense because economically that's where the money's probably coming from. It's probably coming from the current year's earnings. So that's the idea. So we ignore the accumulated EMP only if we have negative accumulated EMP and positive current EMP. So that means that EMP with respect to step three is $24,000. Only with respect to that step. You're going to see that we're going to have to calculate accumulated EMP later on, and that's going to be important um, for we're going to use the negative accumulated EMP again. But right now, for determining step sub step two of step three, the taxation to the shareholder of the distribution, Kiwi, EMP is $24,000. Okay, finally, we get to sub step three, which is we go through the three part 
waterfall. We go through the three-part waterfall. In the three-part waterfall, we take the, the amount of the distribution, which is step one. So we have $15,000. And the first stop on our waterfall is the amount of EMP that we have to the extent of EMP. That amount is considered a dividend. A dividend. So here we have $15,000 distribution and $24,000 EMP. So that means that all $15,000 of the dividend, I'm sorry, all $15,000 of the distribution, you gotta watch your language there, distribution versus dividend, all $15,000 of the distribution is considered a dividend for tax purposes. So that means that we use, again, because it's a waterfall, so one, two, and three should equal this amount. Since we already have 15,000 here, that means that number two, the return of capital, R, O, C is zero. And then number three, which remember is capital gain distribution, capital gain distribution, that's also going to be zero. And again, this is because the $15,000 was fully covered by EMP, was fully covered by EMP. If there wasn't enough EMP, you go to the next parts of the waterfall, but the first part of the waterfall collects that. This is the waterfall under section 301, by the way. It's a section 301 waterfall. Very important rule. Okay, so we have a $15,000 dividend. The consequence is the Kiwi from this $15,000 distribution. All $15,000 of the distribution is considered a dividend. The basis to Kiwi in the stock is still $24,000. So we've determined the tax consequences to Kiwi, and we've got steps one, two, and three, we're done with that. So now we need to go to step four. So if you recall, step four is to adjust the accumulated earnings and profits. And again, we're trying to get accumulated earnings and profits ready for the beginning of year three because we're looking at year two here and we had year one prior to that. So there's a formula and it's the beginning. We start with the beginning accumulated EMP. So it's the beginning of year two, right? That's for that's year two here, because that's what we're in. And the beginning accumulated earnings and profits for year two is going to be twenty thousand dollars because that was current EMP in year one. There there's no distributions we're told, so it rolls over. So that's sorry, I said twenty thousand. It's going to be negative twenty thousand. So we start with a negative accumulated EMP balance of twenty thousand. We then add or subtract depending on the situation the current year EMP. So year two EMP. Here, the current year EMP, we're told, is $24,000 for year two, which is positive. So we add 24,000. Okay, next is we add any step two or step one gain. Remember, it's a cash distribution, and cash distribution, no consequences, so this is gonna be zero. So we add zero, then we subtract away the distribution adjustment. And the reason it's called distribution adjustment is because this amount can change. But what is it almost always? It's almost always the amount of dividend. So the amount of dividend is almost always a distribution adjustment. And that's going to be a subtraction. It's always a subtraction. We subtract away the distribution adjustment. So that's minus 15,000. So if this, if this amount of dividend was 10,000, this would be 10,000. Okay, just so you know. The exception to this, which we'll see in later problems, is if you're distributing property, not cash, property, you use the amount, I'm sorry, and the property's basis is greater than the fair market value, you use the basis. That's really the only time, the only exception. There's a few other um, exceptions, but those, those, that's the only major exception. Okay, so then we compute that, we add that, and subtract those things all together, and we get the the ending accumulated EMP for year two, which rolls over to the beginning balance for year three. So negative twenty thousand plus twenty four thousand is a positive four thousand plus zero is positive four thousand minus a fifteen thousand is eleven a negative eleven thousand. So I apologize, I use negative, or I use brackets for negatives and then a plus and minus for what you're doing in terms of the operations. So this is a coming of a negative EMP, and then this is minus 15,000, that's the amount of the uh, dividend. 
distribution. So that gives us a negative 15,000 that starts over the next year. So again, the consequences to Kiwi, $15,000 distribution as a dividend, $24,000 basis in the stock remains the same because there's no return capital and there's no capital gain distribution. Consequences to um, Fruit Sushi Inc. Next year, the accumulated EMP is going to be, I'm sorry, end of this year, it accumulated EMP is negative 11,000. So beginning of next year, negative 11,000. So I hope you enjoy this video. Please make sure to watch the next problem sets because again, every problem set has a new principle involved in it.